Okay, it's one o'clock. Welcome everyone. I'm Becky Rears, your session moderator, and welcome to the 1 to 145 Sakai Faculty Showcase using Teams as Forum Discussion Facilitators. Your presenter is Susanna Sabo, and Dr. Susanna Sabo is the Associate Professor and Graduate Education Programs Director in the Education Department at Marist College, Poughkeepsie, New York. She teaches online, hybrid, and face-to-face -face graduate level courses in educational psychology, research methods, learning theories, assessment, and diversity. She used Blackboard for four years and since 2008 has used Sakai iLearn for all of her courses. Her research interests include human cognition and learning, integrating technology in classroom instruction and assessment, and gender issues in education. And before she starts, I have to give you a couple of housekeeping tips. Um, all the attendees are muted, but if you have any questions, please enter them in the GoToWebinar questions box. And we'll, um, let's see, I'll read out all of the questions at 1130, and uh, Dr. Sabo will address your questions then. The session is recorded, and it will be available later on the Apparel YouTube channel. And finally, if you have any problems with audio or video, enter a comment in the questions box, and I'll be glad to help you. Once again, please welcome Dr. Susanna Sabo. Hi everyone, uh, it's a little bit uh, weird uh, not seeing everyone. I hope you had a good uh, day so far. Um, I attended the other sessions and uh, I am excited to share also from uh, what I learned. Uh, I will present mostly what I do in my courses. Uh, I teach asynchronous online courses and Always I wanted to make them a little bit more interactive so that my students don't just only go there alone and complete the assignment and uh, log in or log out and not um, feel as part of our community. And also I wanted them not only to give me back what I teach them as content, most of the times our students are um, actual um, teachers, K-12 to teachers, so I wanted them to try to think a little bit deeper, to use critical thinking. And also because we in the course are all teachers, I wanted them to give them also an experience of community, which is very important for teachers. And since most of the teachers in K-12 to will hopefully one or the other time experience also some kind of technology use, online teaching or doing wikis, web pages for their students, I wanted also to give them a little bit of more opportunity to be together. But in the same time, because usually in the face-to-face -face classes we stress so much for our teachers to use constructivist methods, to use teams, to use groups, I wanted to walk the talk and uh, to use teamwork and interaction um, in my online classes also. So when I started uh, teaching online, and that was um, 2005, 2006, I uh, started also reading the literature, you know, to learn how, how should I do it, because I quickly realized, and I'm sure all of you have the experience when you teach online, that you really cannot move an online, uh, into an online course, whatever you were doing face-to-face. -face. You have to do a little bit of modification, a little bit of change. And in order to have the same good uh, critical thinking which you have in, on ground, face to face, how can we get that in an online uh, environment? So I discovered through the readings that in order to set up um, students to think critically, it really requires how you set the tone up for your classroom how you encourage that divergent thinking, how you encourage students to take perspectives, to uh, discuss and debate and um, try to exchange ideas instead of just giving up um, 
uh, memorized or uh, open textbook uh, information. So in order to help them think a little bit deeper, they need to give the reasons and talk a little bit what is their opinion. So all that deep learning is contrasted with the surface learning with do you think critically so you think you use deep learning as opposed to memorization and just recall of information, which is just surface learning. So the literature shows that deep learners are active learners. They ask themselves questions, organize their thought, uh, connect and integrate with new material, have learning goals, and do mastery learning. So if, if you are in the education domain, you know that in a face-to-face -face environment in the classroom, we most of the time use a constructivist model where students interact, they are in groups, they discuss, they help each other, exchange ideas. So I wanted to move that into the online platform. Now, in order to do that, I had to encourage my students to engage in these open-ended questions, to have peer facilitator, but quickly I learned that if I am the sole facilitator for the forum discussions, it's a really busy day and busy night for me in order to try to catch and try to make my students interact and um, give them more options. I also notice that when I am the only facilitator, the discussion is very repetitive because students on the other side of the screen, on the other side of the line, they don't always read everything. Um, they read peers that they are interested or their friends postings, while other people in the classroom, they might say the same thing over and over. So in order to really have students engage a little bit more, I started to use student-led online facilitation strategies. And these increase the sense of the community and also encourage students' participation for the online. They also use reflective thinking because it helps them with the setup of the course, and I will show you in a minute how what I mean by that, how the rules, the procedures are of the course, of the online course, it will help students um, develop more relations, exchange ideas, and uh, apply what they are learning. And also, lo and behold, will help them think about their own thinking. What is the metacognition which we want teachers to be able to use to have experience so that they not only have the experience but on their turn they will be able to walk the talk so when they teach either in a face-to-face -face environment either might be they teach some online component they will be also able to replicate the same environment that they learned in in the online classes. So this way I started using teams for the forum participation. Now this ensures that at least once per semester I have some a group, a team of students who become experts in that topic. They can facilitate, they can push their peers to think deeper, uh, they can interact with them. Um, teams also provide the opportunities to students to feel the sense of leadership and their responsibility. As a side of the individual responsibility that everyone needs to participate in the forum twice per week and post the required number of forum postings, the team will know that they are the ones who are the leaders and um, they have this sentiment of ownership that they are 
making sure that the class goes well and they can pick up where is the repetition across the different forums. So what did I do in my courses? I teach, um, every semester I teach a, one, at least one online course and I teach uh, educational psychology in the fall online and I teach um, research methods in the spring and in the summer I teach building a community of learners which is a diversity content um, course. So um, each week we are covering one chapter of the book and in that I have a group of students who are a team facilitator. The team facilitator students need to come up with questions from the readings. So each week we have questions one, two, three, four, five, six, and also we have a couple of other students who do independent work. So these are the students who go and search for research journal articles on their respective topic and they present an article. They are doing this as individual work. The team does the facilitation as a team component. So this way students will have when they open a um, forum for the week, they will have six different questions which they can go read and then they post. The requirement is that you choose one of the six questions. You have to write a larger reflection, a minimum of 800 words reflection on the content that you read, the chapter, in response to one of the questions. Then you have to, across the rest of the time of the week, you have to do at least two more replies to other questions, not to the same question. And I use this requirement because I don't want students to get stuck on one question, to post all of their work and all of their interaction on one single question because then um, I'm not sure how much they read the rest of the discussions. So this way I am asking them, you post your reflection on one of the questions and then on the other, choose other two questions where you can interact and post comments to other team members, other uh, class members. And also out of the presentation which is individually done from the journal articles, you choose one article and post a response to that and then post some comment to the other articles. But this is the minimum that is required and minimum does not bring you maximum points and they know that if they complete the minimum that's just uh, let's say 85% uh, average. If they want more points for the respective week then they should do a little bit more interaction and more posting. As the, as the week of the discussion of that topic will complete, the team also will post a summary by what was discussed in each of the questions. These summaries are mimicking what we do in a face-to-face -face class when we put students in groups to discuss some topics and then students on a flip chart or uh, in group they have a um, spoke person who will present this is what we discussed in each group. So this way at the end of the class, at the end of the week of our class, uh, students will have the opportunity to just go click back and see what was discussed in, in the entire questions. Usually this course, well, because this course it is a core course, so it's uh, completed by all our graduate education students and is part of the basic need of theory for their electronic portfolio, which is a capstone project. 
uh, we encourage students to make sure that they do read the summary questions and they can save for their, fi their files and then use later in their reflections for their capstone portfolio, which is completed at the end of the program. So <clears throat> what kind of little tips I can give you from this part is that instructors uh, should model and scaffold the forum discussions in the beginning, especially at the beginning, at the start of the semester. I have to model a lot. I have to nudge a little bit of how to post those reflections, how to post the comments, so that the comments are not very basic. So they go a little bit up on Bloom's taxonomy that uh, above only a publication. Students have a tendency of uh, starting just to give examples of what they do in class or how the, the theory will apply to their classrooms. And I want them to go a little bit further with that of evaluating what they do of, okay, I give you an example of what I did, but now I understand how that relates to the theory and did I do what the theory says, or how can I improve it? I, also, I provide individual weekly feedback for the students in the uh, beginning, telling them, hey, this is something that I liked how you did. Uh, in your comments might be, here is uh, an example what you were pretty basic. I would like you to improve a little bit to tell me more about evaluation. Uh, give me uh, a little bit more in analysis of, of your example. So I noticed that in the beginning of the semester, I do more of this uh, very specific individual feedback. But then as students realize what are the requirements and how she, they should improve, they, they should improve pretty fast. And by the mid-semester, this feedback, it's a little bit more sporadic, and I point out only to those students that I see that they start lagging a little bit, and I remind them, and it's a little bit less structured towards the middle of semester, so that is not so repetitive. In my research class, I combine the use of teamwork and individual work because of the nature of the course. And I am sure that all of you who teach online, you realize that the nature of how we design the class, how we teach the class, it's so much based on the content that we teach. So for example, in the research course, because students um, actually need to learn the different research methods, the research designs. They need to be very specific. Uh, the language is very specific. They need to learn how to write in APA style, how to design a particular type of design. We study quantitative designs, qualitative designs, and action research. So this is like a um, very general research methods course. And across the semester, they need to be able to produce one uh, design on, from each category. So in this course, when we study, um, when we learn uh, the content, I have weeks when we study the content and then I use the team's facilitators there. And um, I have weeks when they are doing just individual work, they are presenting their assignments. So this combination is very good because when we learn the content, I use the same team facilitation and they come up with discussion questions on the different uh, research design types. I have students who do their individual work with the article critique, which is presenting one of the designs. So they are supposed to find an article that uses the design that we learn in that chapter. Students have the same requirement to monitor and help 
and catch where it's needed and push the discussions forward. And uh, so at the end of the week to make a summary of the discussions. When we have weeks when actually students do independent work, when they present their little research method design projects, then I use um, everyone post their independent work and then everyone discusses and uh, this way they have many, many examples of research designs. Another way that I use the teams is when I ask specific teams, and this is an example from my learning theories class, I ask teams of students to focus on a very specific topic from a chapter. And that's why I named this slide Digging Deeper with Wiki Teams, because each team will take one specific topic from the chapter we studied that week, and then they go and try to make a, a wiki page where they present a little bit on the theory, and then they are uh, finding a couple of articles, and then they give one, oops, too much, uh, and then they give um, one example of uh, the application to real life. So this teamwork is mostly to uh, focus on a really small part of the chapter. Then uh, the rest of the class is supposed to go and uh, comment on this hot topic of the expert team uh, of the wiki. I guess it's just going too fast. Okay, so what kind of tips um, I, I can give uh, you for how to do, uh, how to use the, the teams? One of the tips is about the settings and how to use the discussion starters, those uh, question uh, starters. Um, in the first semester when I taught with teams, um, I kind of let the teams to use their discussion starters, but I noticed that I had to go and do the editing on the forum. So since then, I always ask students to present me the questions before they post it to the forums. This way, behind the scenes, I can uh, edit the question, I can add one more reading, I can attach one more article, and that way the team goes and posts clean and rich questions, because the level of the discussion will be based on the level of the question. If we ask question at the low level, obviously the discussion will be at the low level. Using teams also ensures that at least once per semester, one team will be the expert on that topic. The information and the burden of facilitation, it's a little bit eased up on the faculty who is teaching. And that's not only because uh, students teach uh, and they facilitate. This regard that I have a team, I always am also part of the facilitation team. Um, I read everything and, and give feedback to students. But in, in using a facilitation team, um, the, the entire discussion is not as repetitive. And uh, we have more eyes to see. It might be that I see in one way, but another team member will have another experience, will have other questions. And uh, also, I I, as an instructor, give a little bit of uh, um, space for the students to take and share my power. And that helps them because uh, it teaches them to lead and also to teach, which actually is what we want from our graduate students. 
couple of tips on the requirements. Um, I always ask them to post those uh, reflections, initial reflections, just to make sure that my students do respond using the content that they read. I ask them to comment to each other so the repetition is a little bit less. And just as I told uh, previously, I ask them to comment on different questions so that their reflection and their comments are not narrowed so much on one single topic. And this way, actually, they see what other colleagues they said. I always ask them to use research in discussion. So use the textbook, but also use the resources from our iLearn, where I always attach a couple of more um, articles and chapters on the readings. I ask them the summary to make the summary of the weekly discussions. And at the end, I always use a team evaluation where the team members evaluate each other and they turn that evaluation um, only in the assignments. So they don't see how each other evaluates each other. Um, and based on this evaluation, I will assign the score. So the team gets a score, a general score for their performance on that forum. But in the same time, individuals can receive the team score or can receive a lower score if team members downgraded their participation. The wiki team, it's uh, mostly to deepen the discussions and um, students always have the choice what kind of topic they want to be experts in and um, this way it opens a little bit more the participation, but also we dig deeper and we learn more into depth one of the topics. For the final exams, I always ask them also, which are also teamwork, I always ask them to post all their materials and each team will facilitate their own um, final exam material. Some tips on instructional mindfulness, and I named it that way because it's what I learned across the years on using Teams. The instructor is facilitator at all times uh, by modeling, scaffolding, providing individual feedback of what was good, what was not so good, and some ideas on how to improve because students really need more guidance behind the scenes, not only modeling on the forum. I offer more in the beginning, and as semester progresses, obviously, it's a little bit less. I have used more structure in the first part of the semester, and help, it helps the level of performance, it helps the level of discussions on the forums, and also um, it helps the students to, in, to improve. As semester progresses, I empower the students to take more charge, and by midterm, I always have from my surveys, because um, as you all know, we faculty get our course evaluation surveys back the next semester. So that doesn't help me do any kind of changes this semester, if I find out from my students where do I need to accommodate or to change anything in my course. So that's why I do my own midterm surveys. I always use SurveyMonkey. It's anonymous. And I always share their, the results. So what they tell me then I post in the Q&A forum. I say, hey, here's the results from midterm survey. And either I bring changes if I can bring changes if they are legit. If not, I justify why I cannot change mid-course something, or I bring very small changes. This way, we have the opportunity to improve the course, and in the end, the content is very important for the final, 
So any kind of improvement mid-course will also improve the final exam. So before I um, thank you for listening to me, um, I would like to open for discussions, but I would be very interested to find out from you how do you use uh, teams in your classes, in your online um, courses. Um, what kind of other suggestions, ideas uh, can you give me? Because I would like to uh, learn from you. So I see this opportunity not only, hey, here it is what I do and how I do it, but it's a two-way um, sharing that you can tell me now uh, from your experience and uh, we can have a good discussion. I see we have almost 15 minutes of discussion, so let's uh, take advantage of it. And uh, thank you for listening, and now I uh, open it for discussions. Okay, here's a question. All right. What criteria do you use for team evaluation? Uh, for team evaluation, um, let me see, can I open quickly? Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you see? Uh, mm -hmm. my yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, here is my rubric. Wait, wait, wait. Teams here online. Okay, so I have a team agreement form uh, when uh, students, uh, this is at the beginning when they form the teams where they have to put their information but then they have to share um, what kind of skills you have and three most important uh, rules for team, team when I work in teams. And then here is at the end of the work, here it's what they will, um, let me make it a little bit bigger, can I make it bigger so that you see. Okay, so I ask them to grade each other, to score each other uh, on a Likert scale of one poor to excellent. Quality and preparation of content, um, assignment responsibility, work completed in timely manner, came up with useful ideas, or respond in, in time for online meetings. Since this is an online course, it's very important that behind the scenes, they um, each of them do their time and do their, their activity and their tasks which are required. So then I have an open-ended um, question, explain below the reason why evaluating each your member the way you did. And uh, because this is always submitted in the assignments where only the individual who submits it and uh, I can see the evaluation, they put their team members and their own, um, their own name, uh, they trust that uh, the scoring will be so fair. And um, across the semesters I found out that the students really like this opportunity at the end to um, show who was the team player who, and who was uh, a little bit slacker there. And that person should not get the total scores. Any other questions? I would be interested on uh, how uh, everyone else uses um, either teams or here's forming teams. 
instructions. Do you use Teams and uh, what uh, advantages and disadvantages you might find out? Oh, okay. I just got another question. I'm sorry. Um, do you make this rubric available at the beginning of the semester? Yes. Yes. The, everything is posted in uh, iLearn in resources. I have a folder uh, where they find this uh, forming teams where they uh, have the instruction of what they are supposed to do and what's their responsibilities and then they have the uh, online team agreement which they will complete this team agreement and I make a special forum for team materials so once that this document circulates to all of the team members, when it's completed, they post this document on the forum in the open. So this way, it's a little bit of, hey, this is what we agreed upon. So just in case you forget, you can go back in the forum and check it out. And then at the end, um, this team evaluation, they will complete. But uh, this also, so all these documents are uh, all into the in the resource in the resources folder so they have access to everything and everyone knows how they will be evaluated as team members we also have uh, <coughs> I have uh, like uh, just um, instructions for you know what they are supposed to do and this is what uh, I post for um, each forum so they they kind of see what is the responsibility so details on forum participation what the teams are supposed to do so when you are supposed to post the discussion starters how you are supposed to do them then once that you develop the questions, then you attach supplementary readings, additional materials, and then between Tuesday to Saturday, you will facilitate and the day after the forum is closed for posting by the class, you will post a question summary for each of the of the questions and remember to submit your team evaluation form and then I even tell them see teamwork resources teamwork folder with additional instructions. The poster responded that they really like the process you've set up here and that it, you could even turn it into a competency badge that you could give students at the end of the semester such as um, with yeah, large that's, groups. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like who was the best team or who was the best team player? And she said this might be um, oh, quite a workload though if they were large groups. Yeah. Well, I am very lucky because uh, our online classes are topped to 25. Very rarely we have uh, 26, 27 students when the section is a little bit larger, but usually it's topped to 25, which is really nice. And, and yes, indeed, um, I think my colleague is right that all this uh, detail and uh, organization, I don't see how this would be um, really good in uh, very large classes because, indeed, it takes... Um, uh, a lot of uh, traffic. Might be for larger classes, um, uh, more teams can be used. So in one week, instead of having only one team who is facilitating along with me, uh, we could have two, three, four teams who are facilitating, but then I see how that would be really 
a burden for the instructor to oversee all of them. So then I suspect uh, as an instructor we should uh, even more give free reign and trust that the um, facilitation team is doing a good job and then might be the overseeing would be mostly of let me see exactly what the team is doing instead of let me see everyone everyone's work. Um, she commented that they have up to 80 students in their wow. in their course. Oh. Yes, I and, don't, I, wow, yeah. <laughs> I admire those who are teaching AT students in the course. And then she liked both of your ideas about the types of um, badges that you could award to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, large, uh, it's definitely a difference when the course is small um, and when the course is large. I taught face-to-face -face large uh, classes with between 80 and 100 students. Um, but online, I was really fortunate that this institution and my previous institution where I taught online, that my online classes here are top to 25 at Mary's, but at uh, my previous institution, they were top to 30, which is still a good number. It's not bad, but um, I always see the difference between when I have uh, a group of 20 and with the group it's 25 or going towards 30. It's a, it's a difference, and I imagine it will be a very big difference when yeah, 80. And the poster also commented that um, badges are a great scheme and that they can match them, um, you can match them with other competencies taught across your curriculum. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm always looking for new ideas and uh, I like to learn how my other colleagues do online teaching because I think it's always uh, always space for improvement. <laughs> any other questions or any suggestions or if you want to share how you do it? Um, as I said, I am interested to find out uh, how other uh, colleagues are doing uh, in their little online shell. Might be other people use uh, other kind of uh, forum discussions or I have another colleague who uses uh, uh, games and uh, interactive games um, with the forums in combination. I didn't try yet the games, but um, I hope I will uh, learn a little bit. Well, if anyone wants to ask another question, we've got a couple more minutes before I have to stop the recording. Thank you to everyone who was there and uh, listened. Oh, another person said, thank you so much for the presentation, and I would share your ideas with faculty that they are supporting. You can share oh, your ideas you. with their faculty. Thank you. Yeah, I guess uh, that's how we learn, by reading and uh, sharing with the fellow teachers who are into the teaching. We learn from each other. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to attend some uh, afternoon sessions to learn mm -hmm. new ideas. There's lots of good sessions here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yours included. <laughs> no, you have very good ideas. I use many of the techniques you use as well. Oh, good. Great. Great. Let me see if we've got one more look to see if I missed anybody. Okay. Oh, another person said, thank you for sharing, Susanna. 
Oh, that was very nice. Very also nice. Here, taking a little time from Friday. All right. Well, it's about that time. So thank you very much. Forty-five. Yep. Have a good uh, session, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.